What's up, guys? We are doing a trade review, an earlier, earlier than than usual trade review. Uh, I got off of work early. I had an appointment and stuff, so um, I actually don't remember exactly which trades I took. So let's take a look. Um, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, the first move of the day was OEG, which is funny because it was the big move of the day at the end of the day for me as well. Um, it was actually in pre market, believe it or not. I didn't actually, I didn't end up taking this trade. I did not end up taking this trade. I just want to be tra transparent in that respect. Um, it was right here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, okay. So at AF, at 7.58, so that would be right here. I said, Four eight seven down to four seven eight. So that would be um yeah, right there. Based on these candles mostly. I did it on stream and I, I could have swore that there was a different reason. That there was like a, a significant reason I ended up taking one of these, but I, I can't remember what it is. So anyways, this was my zone here. Um, I'll have to go back and watch the VOD on the stream. Maybe I was wrong in that respect, but my stop is going to be down here at the 465. Um, price did come down exactly to fill me at the 487. Uh, I didn't have any bids because it's pre-market. I don't trade pre-market, but I was kind of talking through it um, just the same way in my stream as if I had taken the position um, to kind of just talk out loud and give people an idea for what was going on. Uh, so, you know, over here on the five, this is a beautiful flag pattern coming down. Love to see it. Uh, looks a little like this. A little flag action here. And, uh, and then it breaks out. You know, I love flags flags and ascending triangles those are like my two favorite patterns uh same thing over here it's the flag is even more apparent one two three right here flags up breaks out um now generally what i try to do when i see flag patterns is i try to make a zone that is the same you know the same way as um the, the same way that you would make a zone normally using previous price action candles I would still do that, right? But I would try to factor. I would try to make a zone utilizing that method that also incorporates where the bottom of a flag would be. So let's say that I see a flag taking place right here, right? Let's see that. Let's say that um, here the ten is a better example. Let's say that I see this flag taking place, and it looks like looks like that, right? I see this flag taking place. So what I want to do is create a zone utilizing the base of that flag where I believe the base will be with some extra downside, right? So that would have been a better 494 to 487 would have been the perfect entry. Uh, would have been the perfect entry. Obviously in hindsight, it's very easy to say that, um, but there is no price action to base um, that 494 level off of otherwise um, maybe yeah nothing pre-existing that we could have oops, we could have used but the point remains um, when I when I see a flag pattern forming I like to create a zone that will give me good value adds that also is at the base of, of a flag pattern because that way when it flags down like this I get tapped in but the flag pattern, even if it doesn't break out, if it breaks down, it's still rejecting to the downside just to break even, just to where I got filled. Hopefully that makes sense. In my head, it makes more sense than when I'm trying to say it, but 
Um, yeah, so whenever I see flag patterns on the five and the 10, I like to create zones at the right under where I believe the bottom of that flag will form. And that way when you get wicked in, uh, it'll wick down here, come back up to continue the pattern the way that it's supposed to look. Uh, and you got in down here as opposed to up here. That way if it does break down as opposed to breaking up, uh, you're protected a little bit. And if it does break up, you know, you have, you got in down here as opposed to up here. So you, you make even more out of it. Uh, so I really love flag patterns. They're one of my favorites. Ascending triangles I like a lot too for similar reasons. Um, you know, because you can kind of create a zone that's low so that if it does break to the downside, it gives you time to either get out at break even, a small loss, a small gain, what have you. As opposed to being like, all right, I'm in right here at this $5 level. Hopefully the flag goes up because if it goes down, we're in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, by getting in down here, sure, we might miss it if we don't get filled. You might miss the big move, but um, you know, if you do get in at 488 and it was at five and it broke down, you know, you're losing hardly anything, if anything at all, because you know your entries were down here in the area that it would break down to. So yeah, I, I like those patterns a lot. Anyways, that was uh, my first trade of the day, OEG. Um, I had an AMC zone at the very beginning of the day, and I cannot for the life of me remember where it was. I ended up also not taking this one because it was close to the open, but I called it, um, I called it really early in the morning and it ended up being perfect. Yep, right here. Right here. No, wait, there, something like that. Anyways, um, it came. Price came down and filled me, filled my zone. I hadn't actually uh, set any bids, but it's okay. But you know what? I think it was actually a bit higher because I think I got filled on this action. Let me see. So that would have been to get filled on this action. It would have been up here. Regardless, I ended up not taking the trade anyways. Yeah, 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 that's where it was. That's where it was because I got filled right here. I got filled with this. Um, and it, Or I would have been filled with this had I actually taken it. But um, I ended up not. You could have taken this for a decent move. Uh, you can double check my stream. if I don't know if those zones are exactly correct or not. but Because I didn't type them in the chat, unfortunately. Um, so I ended up missing that one. I was just focused on other things and still looking and reading chat and stuff. So Microvision was another really good zone that I ended up missing as well because I was watching AMC. I was watching a different ticker. I can't remember what it was. OE, OEG, baby. Uh, yeah, I think I traded OEG again. Um, but anyways, over here at... 8.44. So in this action right here, at this candle you see me hovered over, I said MVIZ 1634 to 1622. 1634, 1622. Uh, and as you can see, price came down, boop, filled, went up. Somebody in my chat was like, yo, great zone on MVIZ. And I was like, what? What do you mean great zone on Invis? And I went and looked and I was like, son of a bitch. You could have taken it once for 50, 30 cents or so, 40 cents. Twice for another 30 cents. Yeah, you could have even taken it a third time for 25 cents. That, that, that's a great zone. You would have had to identify that you know volume and price are fading as you took advantage of that bounce. But um, you know if you if you look over here, it's a beautiful trend, and you can basically, this is a uh, descending triangle. You can essentially just play the support to resistance, support to resistance bounce multiple times, especially after you see it work twice, and you come down to respect the same area and start to move up again. Yeah, you can absolutely jump in it, mark it, even up here, and then sell up here for a quick 10 cent scalp or something. Now, that's obviously a bit more advanced and, and 
involved, I guess is a better way to say it. But yeah, that was a, another really good zone I call. Sorry, I'm super tired. Uh, that was a great zone that I also, once again, did not take. So I had three winning trades between the pre-market, that AMC, and the MVIS that I could have taken, and I didn't. Um, but I'm on a cash account. I'm, I'm trying to stick to options. Uh, now, thankfully, or I guess as of Friday or, or next week or whatever, once my account is finally moved over to margin and everything, we won't have to worry about it anymore. But I was trying to focus on good option plays, which don't always align. Um, so that was unfortunate for that. Uh, tomorrow or whenever else, we will be in better shape. Let's see OEG again. Um, because I ended up calling that one 515 to 497. 847. 847. So what did I say? Uh, 515 to 497. 515. Oh, must have never got filled. That's okay. On to the next. Um, BTX. BTX. So I actually called the zone on BTX and ended up not taking it. Um, and I, I kind of explained it while I was in chat or while I was in on my Twitch stream that, uh, you know, why I thought it was was not a good plan. Uh, 916, so that would be, that would be 1016. It's right here. I called 1569, 1557. 1557, So, uh, yeah, you could have gotten filled right here. It broke down. My stop is actually right down. My stop is actually, I want to say it was right here. Um, I ended up not taking the trade. Once it came down the way that it did, uh, you look on the 5 and the 10, and it shows you like the method of coming down. This big candle, this big candle, these candles. Those are not good ways to, you know, you don't want to catch a knife way up here, right? You'd rather, rather catch a knife at this level. Now, in hindsight... In hindsight, now that I'm seeing this, you know, it, you could have absolutely made a, a really, really good zone based on like, you know, maybe that level, perhaps that level, um, and gotten a really, really strong fill and a strong move. Um, you know, if so, I didn't take the trade. It was a loser, uh, anyways. But yeah, I didn't take it. Um, so this is actually the the. The first trade of the day. I th no, I ended up taking a, an OEG trade somewhere. And I made some money on it. Um, oh, no, no. I did, you know what? I took an AMC option in the morning that paid. That's what it was. And then I went and watched AMC for the Ascending Triangle. And... Uh, it actually spanked my boot, my booty, pretty bad. Uh, oh no, no, no! It, it spanked my booty before the ascending triangle. So I ended up being done for the day until significantly later. So at this point, I had taken two options. I think I was up like <laughs> thirty-five bucks or something, real small. Um, I wasn't really feeling everything this morning. I, my brain was just not quite moving as quickly as I would have hoped. Um, I don't know. It just felt like a sluggish day a little bit, but. Um, I said that AMC down here is trying to rally, so at 10.03, so that would be 11.03 in this time. Yeah, yeah, down here. I said it's going to move back up to 30, going to watch for the $30 interaction for another short side move. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. So earlier in the day, I actually called what would have been a beautiful short, I wish I would have taken puts. Um, but I actually drew these lines in chat on my stream, and I said this 3125 level, if it comes up there and makes a, a lower high on the day, this would be a, a, an amazing sign for shorts to risk, say, you know, this much and take a good short position here. Because a lower high is being formed, it's on less volume, um, you know, it's, it's significantly below the high of the day. Uh, the stock's been, you know, exhausted because it's been running for so many days. Uh, so I, you could have taken a short right here, and as soon as it broke down through this level through VWAP, you could have covered here VWAP for a, you know, eighty cent move or whatever. Um, potentially even more, depending on where your fill ended up being. But uh, you could have, you know, after this chop or scaled some out and held, rose your stop up, held through this, 
You could have caught just a, a nasty move. What is like a three or four dollar move on a thirty one dollar ticker? It just is crazy good. Um. So, anyways, I, after seeing that, I was like, okay, this formed a lower high. I mean, this formed a uh, higher low right here, and I was like, well. In my mind, I was like, we can just kind of constitute that as a double bottom. You look to the 10 and the 5 here. And uh, it created what, you know, is this W pattern right here, you see. Now, when price came up to the $30 mark, it happened to be like right at VWAP at the same time. So I ended up taking puts and scaling into puts. Oops. Like I would any, like I would a regular zone. From here to here and I held for a while I held for a while through all of this nonsense until I had a once this uh, I think that is at 3047 or some kind of I'm really struggling right here <laughs> these shapes oh it's because the magnet is on so uh, right here, I think it was 3047 or something like that. Yeah, this ended up being my stop because I, I rode through this. It came back in the money and I said, okay, I'll make a stop right here since I've, you know, I'm hoping my thesis is, is that th this is the top of this rally and we're going downwards. So if it breaks this level, I know that this is no longer the top of that rally and my thesis is wrong. I don't need it to come all the way up here for me to be like, oh yeah, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> I, I, you know, I am have very defined, like my plan is this. I'm going in because I believe these candles are the top. Uh, I believe this is a higher low. I'm sorry, a lower high. And I believe this is a good short side move at a whole dollar, at a key level, at VWAP, interacting with blah, blah, blah. That was my plan, right? So because of that, I know that as soon as this part breaks, that my plan, okay, that plan I had is, is wrong. Because, you know, in order for the plan to be right, this would have had to have been the top. And it no longer is. Very, very simple. Very easy, you know, sometimes it's important to keep those rules and those ideas simple because, you know, I ex protected myself from what ended up being, you know, significant upside or downside because I was, you know, in the position short. Um, so, yeah, this ended up, uh, because I scaled in and it popped through here, once it popped, I, I ate a market order and it ended up filling me kind of high. Um, so I ended up taking like a, a pretty fat loss on these options here. Uh, I had washed away my wins for the day. I think I was... I think I was down like 180 bucks, and I, you know, again, I was just kind of like off on the day. I wasn't taking advantage of of moves that I was, um, you know, that I had already called out. I was I was kind of hyper focused on options, which I think was was kind of hamstringing me a little bit. Uh, so what did I do at the end of the day? I took one final trade in OEG. Um, I I ended up calling a zone on AMC, on. Blackberry on WPG and none of them got filled or I didn't take them. I'm curious if the BB zone ended up getting filled. Where was that? 11.15, 11.07. That was at 1. So that would be over here. Yeah, so it just never got filled. 11.15, yeah, it's right here. Never came back down to that, unfortunately. Oh, well. Them's the breaks. Uh, anyways, my final zone of the day, I'm not going to go over the ones that didn't get filled. I mean, they didn't get filled. It's that simple. Um, OEG. Man, this is a ticker that was chopping. But what's important to uh, observe, though, is is that there are things that you... There are bits of information that you can quickly identify even through the chop, Right? Things that you can see and say, okay, well, there's actually something taking place here, right? This is actually less important. Um, so I noticed that, okay, well, this looks kind of like an ascending triangle, which, again, as I've mentioned, I, I, I rather enjoy. Mm, I can't remember where the... Uh where I drew the trend lines. Fuck it, we'll start it right here. Yep, something like that, right? And the top was at 640. Yeah, so this is this, this is the move. So you can see though that even though this is just a bunch of really messy chop, 
that there is a pattern forming. There is something to it. There is information being given. Here, I'm going to pull up this picture because it's a little easier for me to... So 607 to 598. 607 to 598 was my zone. I actually think it was 590. No, 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 it was 598. I'm looking at it. So I ended up filling... I know this is a lot on the screen right here. I'm about to clear it up a little bit. Um, with a picture I have over here. So, uh, and then my stop loss was down here at this level. I know it's a lot of lines and shit, but bear with me. Um, so this actually ended up being what I was looking at. So I added dips into the zone. Now, again, remember when I mentioned, remember when I mentioned on the, um, on the move at the very beginning of the day, it was an OEG move as well, it was that bull flag. I said, now when I do bull flags, I wanna create zones that incorporate that flag while still maintaining my zone strategy. Now, how do I do that? Well, for a bull flag situation, I'll create a zone based on previous price action that takes into account the fact that I want to be at the base of where I expect that flag to form to. Now, ascending triangles are very similar. So as you can see here, this is the hard trend line here going up. This is the uh, top of the ascending triangle. So um, when I create a zone, I wanted to create a zone that would take into account, you know, not only previous price action levels, as you can see. Uh, this is a five minute chart, I believe. Um, not only previous price action, which is how I form my zones, as you are all familiar, but also that utilizes um, the pattern that's being offered as well. So what I did is I created this pullback zone that you know, I figured it was based on uh, my trend pullback system. You know, this would be a higher low of price. Um, it would respect the trend. It's using previous price action, but it's also taking into account, you know, basing on the trend line support. And what ended up happening, it comes up, boom, wicks me almost to the cent. I think it might have been to the cent. It wicked me in and closed back up above my zone. So I'm already in the money, you know, 10 cents or something at this point. Already in the money, 10 cents. Um, you know, it ended up trading sideways for a while, even after that. I mean, that was like right here. You see this candle right here, this red one. Um, and you can see how much longer it traded sideways. But here's the thing, right? This is why I love ascending triangles so much. Because I can bet on the fact that the ascending triangle is going to continue to ascend and wedge, I know that if the triangle does want to go and break to the upside, that as long as I get an entry off the base of this pattern, off the base of this trend line, then I know that, um, I guess the trend was a little different in my uh, picture. It must have been down here, something like that. As long as I get filled close to the trend line, as price continues, it gets tighter, right? So I know that without failing the, the pattern, which would be breaking down below the trend line, I'm never going to be at risk of being stopped out. Like as long as I get a good entry on an ascending triangle and it truly is an ascending triangle, the price is going to ascend like it does. So it's going to end up going up here. You can see that I, I was never at risk of being in the red because I got a great entry. And after that, it did what the pattern does, which is continue to go up in this general uh, diagonal direction. So I could create my stop below my, you know, the low of the trend or what have you. But I was never at any risk of being red because you can see that it respected the pattern and the pattern is that, you know, the ceiling and the floor get closer and closer and closer together. Well, as long as you get in at the floor, you know, as it gets closer and closer together, your entry will never be, you know, in the equation anymore. That's why I love ascending triangles so much because like if I get a great entry down here on trend line support with a zone, then, you know, as long as it does respect the pattern, I'm just, I'm pretty much green from the moment you hit go, you know? And uh, and then it ended up breaking huge, dude. It, it was a nasty move. Um, and actually, so it, it came up here, it broke. This will be more important on the two or easier to identify on the two. So it broke above, um, now I actually said in chat, let's see if I can find it. I said in chat, hey, um, I'm going to sell at the pop over. I'm going to scale the pop over of this 642, the top of the ascending triangle, the top of the pattern. Now, why am I going to do that? Because oftentimes you're going to see these little, well, first of all, 
I told everybody that, you know, the stock had been knifing all day. If you look at it, it was up knife, up knife, up knife. So I said, because this stock has proven to me that she likes to knife, I'm going to expect that. And once it pops over the top of the zone, the top of the pattern, I'm going to scale out half my position on that pop to protect myself from the, the, the knives that she's proven to me today, uh, she is uh, very likely to do. And it went up and immediately came back down. So I ended up making a great trade, almost, you know, 50 cents or something like that off of that pop on half of my position. And then immediately it went back to where it was. So I took advantage of that. Great, right? Well, as it dipped below this, but it was still trending up, I look over here to the five, I look over here to the 10. Now I'm on my phone, so I, you know, switched between them, the time frames. And I saw that this is, you know, still forming in the pattern. Beautiful respect of the 20 SMA. Uh, VWAP is, is, is moving up in the general direction. So, you know, as it gets closer and closer, we not only have the 20 SMA that price is respecting religiously, we have these dips that are getting just chewed up. We start to see volume come in, right? I started to see this increasing average, increasing volume, increasing more than, than what we had seen for the majority of the day, in, at least in the last couple hours. And I see this the dips as they dip below the 20 get chewed right back up. And the 5 and the 10 are telling me the same thing. Everything that dips below the 20, people are buying because they say, yes, I got in at a good entry. And, uh, and they were pushing. So what did I do? I actually added. I ended up adding back to my winner. Now, I talked about adding to my winner in a previous video. Uh, I think it was the on-demand video, or maybe it was the, the last trade review. I can't remember. Either way, I talk about adding to my winners a lot, and I saw this opportunity. I saw that it was, it was trading within the 640 range. It was wicking above. It was coming back down. All these signs told me that, like, okay, well, if it does, let's say I double my position size up here, and I'm in twice as big, and it breaks down and comes to trend line support, I close out for still profit, you know what I mean? Because it's an ascending triangle. Like I mentioned, you have the trend line support, you have 20 SMA, you have the VWAP. You, all those things have to fail before you get to your stop loss, which is uh, you know, a lot of things that, that would provide you support or at least the opportunity to start to scale out if you do think it's coming down. You, you can assume that those are areas that it's gonna interact with along the way to, you know, to stall out or reverse or to keep going, but you know, buying you a little bit of time to, you know, kind of make those decisions as you, as you go. But I know that if I double my position size here or triple it or quadruple it or whatever, that because my entry was way back here and the, the pattern, the, the trend line is now like, I mean, 20 cents above my entry. The, the base of the pattern is, is now 20 cents in the money still for me. I know that I can safely add some pretty heavy size right here, especially since I had already taken 50% or 50 profit. I can add back in either a full position or a position and a half to be in twice as big, you know, whatever, and know that, you know, if, if it does come down, I can stop out for break even. I've already made some money on the trade. So why wouldn't you, right? Why wouldn't you take that opportunity to like really push this to be instead of a, a good win to a great win? So that's what I did. I ended up taking a size and a half. So let's assume I was in a thousand shares and I sold 500 on the pop. And then I added on this dip on my 500 back. So I ended up being in a full position again. Now, as it traded in the 640s, I ended up getting uh, filled at 642. I doubled my position size at 642. And I held for this rocket. I scaled everything out at like high 680s, 690s. It was like 688, 691, somewhere in that range. I did three different orders where I scaled out entirely, especially as price was starting to trade sideways. And the big reason was because I had already made a huge trade my whole day on that single trade. I was feeling good. I didn't want to be involved in the stress. Again, the ticker had already proven to me that it was the, you know, it had high likelihood to knife. So I was just like taking my gains because I had added to my winner on that before that breakout. Uh, it was a fat, it was a fat win. Um, I was just, I was stoked. I was stoked. I didn't feel like dealing with the, men, the mental trauma, although you could have, you know, held this position for a huge move, $3 almost, you know, obviously in a perfect world, you get into the bottom, you sell at the top, but, you know, I was happy with what ended up being a, you know, almost a dollar move where I was in two, three times as big as a normal position, simply because like in my poker analogy, I identified here that, oh shit, I have a I have a hand I have a poker hand that I think is going to be a winning hand. 
So I'm going to milk this winning hand for all the chips I can get. So I loaded the boat, raised my stop to break even, which was, you know, I'd already, so the worst case scenario, I either make bank or I only make the half a profit I'd already taken. Um, and, and I made bank. I made bank. And it made my whole day. It made my whole week, honestly. It was one of the bigger trades I've ever had. And it was all in a single trade. Simply because what I added to my, I identified that it was a, a situation where I could add to my winner. I was processing the information of the pattern, all the supports, all of the uh, different information that the different time frames were giving me. Uh, I was watching the price action, uh, you know, and I did all this from my phone. I was all I was all on mobile at the time, because I was at work. Uh, so yeah, just a really great, great trade. Um, really ended up making my my whole day, my whole week. <laughs> So I, I'm overwhelmed. I'm super stoked. I ended up uh, taking an account from $2,000 in the end of February uh, to now over $25,000. I'm now over PDT for the first time in my life. So um, that's really incredible. It's been, I've been trading for over a year now, and I've blown up an account. <laughs> I've Traded for a firm for about four or five months now, and you know I do well there. But you know it, it's different to be able to fund your own account and to start out small and to be able to build it up to here. And this was the trade that put me over twenty five k. Um, but now I will. I, I did add an additional eight k when I was you know paid for my actual job. Uh, so ten k of that was was money I deposited. So it was about fifteen grand in returns in the three or four months or whatever. So. You know, I, I don't want to pretend I'm something I'm not, some kind of incredible small account grower or what have you. Um, I did I did deposit some money. I'm I'm very big on being 100% with clarity. I I don't uh, you know I don't hide my winners and my losers from people. That it was on, it was not all grinded out, but uh, but still um, I'm super stoked to finally be over PDT. Uh, I was expecting to be over PDT within the next month or so, which is why I moved over to Weeble. Obviously, you know, I had some great trades that, that expedited the process a little bit, which is which is really incredible. Um, you know, so thank all of you guys who, who watch and, and who, you know, come and hang out with me in my Twitch stream or, or in the Discord or, or whatever. Um, hopefully it just, you know, hopefully this is the, uh, the first step towards, you know, where I want to be eventually. And, um, and, you know, and we're, and we're on our way. Um, one thing is, uh, man, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Totally forgot what I was going to say. Regardless, um, being over PDT is not the like, oh, if I could just be over PDT, you know, I'd, I'd figure this out, right? Like the, it, PDT is, is nice because of the stress that it brings. You can use commission-free brokerages and all that good stuff, right? But don't think that the reason that you're you're not succeeding or that you're failing or whatever is because of Oh, if I was just over PDT, it'd be a completely different story. Now, focus on winning s small winners until you can start to string together some data where you can look back and be like, yeah, this strategy that I've practiced for the past 100 trades um, panned out to about a 50% win rate or an 80% win rate or whatever. You know what I mean? Give yourself the opportunity to test things to figure out what works for you and then start worrying about the money. Um, it took me too long to figure that out, which is why I blew up in the first place. Um, I could have saved a shitload of money had I just put that money aside as opposed to just feeding it to the market. Um, but, you know, I learned and I'm, uh, you know, hopefully going to continue to learn. Um, but just, you know, make sure that you take it slow. I know it's easy to to want to be rich tomorrow. And trust me, I do. You know, no one wants to stop working at Chuck E. Cheese more than this guy, I promise. Uh, <laughs> making, you know laughable money comparatively to a to a good day in the market um but you know you uh you you can't have it done overnight or you're going to miss some you can't force it overnight or you're going to miss a lot of crucial steps along the way and uh and when times are trying or the market's not great or you need to you may make rent or whatever you know you want to be able to lean back on fundamentals so that you've proven to yourself that you can handle um so you know Take it slow. Enjoy the ride. It, it sucks. I, I, I trust me. I know, it sucks. It, it's slow. I wanted to quit my job a year ago, and here I am a year later, still working there. But you know what? I am super proud of you know, just how far we've come, and um, you know, looking forward to uh, whoops, looking forward to moving 
moving even uh, even further along now. Let's compound those games, homie. I will see you guys tomorrow uh, for some... Oh, that was what I was going to say. I can't trade for the rest of the week now <laughs> because I moved my account from cash to margin so I could have you know margin and leverage and all that. Uh, but it says it's going to take a couple of days for it all, to all clear. So I doubt that I'll be even able to trade until probably Friday or Monday. But I'll, I'll still stream and, and call zones out and stuff like that. I guess I'll just paper trade or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll just throw some uh, money in like a like a couple hundred bucks in a Weeble account and trade single option contracts or something. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that's it for me today. I will see you guys tomorrow for some um, more market-related stuff. I'll be streaming on Twitch every morning now. Um, and you know what? Hopefully, uh, hopefully this week continues to treat us all extremely well. I will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, be well, guys.